All right, breaking news just in the White House has indeed asserted executive privilege. This is over census documents requested by the House Oversight Committee for the for the hearing they're having right now. Just what we've been talking about, uh, you know, big political implications here. This gets to uh, census questions which influence how American people are counted, which influences how many districts, uh, congressional districts are, are drawn. Here is the chairman of the House o Committee on Oversight and Reform, Elijah Cummins, speaking now. Pursuant to Committee Rule 5 and Rule 11, House Rule 11, the chair may postpone further proceedings today on the question of approving any measure or matter or adopting an amendment of which a recorded vote for the yeas and nays are ordered. Now, pursuant to notice, I call up a report containing uh, a contempt resolution. Uh, uh, Mr. Really, Chairman, I have a point I, of order. Me, may I finish? May I please finish? Thank you. Now, pursuant to notice, I call up a report containing a contempt resolution related to the 2020 census. Clerk will report the report which has been distributed in advance. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I have a point of order. The gentleman is not recognized. Well, the point of order actually from a parliamentary standpoint is a privileged motion, so I have a point of order, Mr. Chairman. What is your point of order? My point of order is is that Rule 2F of the committee rules have been violated. And, and the, the chairman has received a letter uh, which would outline that that particular rule requires a three-day notice, Mr. Chairman, and, and because the notice was put out on June 10th uh, at 548, uh, this committee's rules have been violated. Now, the chairman may be able to overrule this point of order, but I would like to clarify that if indeed this committee overrules this point of order, then indeed it would be subject to litigation by House Counsel. You will require the Department of Justice to file a brief. It will be litigated because indeed this is violating the House rules that everyone here agreed to. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, um, I'd like to address the, the letter the ranking member uh, sent last night raising a new technical argument about the committee's rule on circulating the memo for today's business meeting. Basically, he argues that the memo should have been sent last Friday instead of this past Monday. I sent a letter back to him this morning explaining my position, and I can summarize it here. In the last Congress, the committee rules used to used to require a memo uh, 72 hours before a business meeting. In January, we on this committee unanimously adopted rules that changed that requirement to three days. As I stated when we made that change, our purpose was to make sure that our committee rules matched the House rules. The timing of our committee rule was drawn from the House rule on noticing business meetings. That rule provides that a markup cannot occur, and I quote, earlier than the third calendar day before it is noticed. The House parliamentarian has interpreted this rule as including the day the notice is sent and the day the business meeting occurs. Committee staff confirmed this interpretation with the parliamentarian again yesterday. So in other words, we needed to send Okay, uh, let's get some Monday. background on what's Four. happening here. Lauren Fox is back on Capitol Hill with more. So, so basically, this committee has asked for documents related to why that citizenship question is mm -hmm. attempting to be put back on the census. And just now, the White House's executive, ex 
exerted executive privilege saying, no, you're not going to get any of these documents. Is that right? That's right. right. Exactly. Just before this hearing was underway, the Department of Justice sent a letter to the committee basically saying that the president had exerted executive privilege. And I just want to read you an excerpt from the letter. It said, this letter is to advise you that the president has exerted executive privilege over certain subpoena documents identified by the committee. Then it later says, in addition, the president has made a protective assertion of executive privilege over the remainder of the subpoenaed documents. So obviously that is what the Department of Justice was uh, saying that they would do last night if the committee moved forward with this contempt vote today. They're moving forward. Then this letter came. So that is exactly what Elijah Cummings, the chairman of the committee, is addressing at the moment. We're also joined by Renato Mariotti, who we brought back. And Renato, we were talking about this just moments ago, the, the, the political importance uh, of this because there are concerns that by putting the census question in, it'll reduce folks who are immigrants, legal ones, mind you, uh, their response, and that and influences how uh, congressional districts are drawn. But legally, getting to this broad uh, and even preemptive, really, declaration of executive privilege here from a lawyer's perspective, I mean, they're using this for everything now. Is that legally sound? Well, it's, it's fine if they're doing it while they figure out which documents are actually protected by executive privilege. In other words, you know, let's say that a thousand documents are being subpoenaed, maybe five of them are actually privileged. So I could see a lawyer saying, look, for right now, the president's asserting executive privilege over all a thousand, while we go through and figure out one by one which ones well, are actually privileged. That's not really privileged. what they're doing, right? Because the executive privilege, they, keep, they bring it up every other day regarding every, you know, subpoena here. Yeah, I think it's slowing things down as a political matter. It could be used as a delay tactic. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, in and of itself, it, it, a court's not going to have a problem with it. I think the question is going to be, in the end, what are they asserting executive privilege over? Uh, and that is really the question. Are they going to continue asserting it overall, or are they going to say there's a small subset of documents uh, and have some justification mm -hmm. for why those are privileged? Mark, right. help us understand. Mark Preston is here, too, I think, mm -hmm. as well. Mark, help us understand, what, like, does this matter after the Supreme Court makes its decision? Because the Census Bureau is ready either way, right? They've got right. two versions of right. the 2020 census mm -hmm. that will go out. One may ask, are you a citizen? And one will not ask that. So when the Supreme Court says either it's legal or it's not legal to include this question on the census, does any of this matter just in terms of what people will actually have to answer? Well, certainly when it comes to this question, it doesn't. But again, this is more about the grander and greater question about what the administration is willing to do and willing to work with when Congress does its oversight yep, responsibilities. Look, the court is, is the high, I mean, that's the end of the road, right? Once the Supreme yeah. Court weighs in, that's it. So yeah. uh, in some ways, people will say that this is a political issue that, that Democrats are trying to stir up. But again, it's not so much that. I think you have to take yourself away from this issue alone and look at this mm -hmm. as two different issues. Yeah. One issue is this. One issue is whether the administration will comply with any right. oversight from Congress. Yeah, but the court has clearly become a political body on so many of these issues. It's so divided down the line uh, on, on issues, whether it's you know gun control or a question like this, uh, seemingly on partisan lines. R Renato, you had Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg warning over the weekend about how on these key upcoming decisions, uh, the court is so bitterly divided. And I wonder, was that signaling, telegraphing here that this is one of them on the census issue? Because again, it has political implications for both parties. Very well could. I will say there are potential ways in which the court can resolve this that sidesteps some of the challenging and thorny issues, but nonetheless allows the Trump administration to go forward with that question. And so I guess all I would just say is um, that we, sh you know, if, if folks are, you know, are concerned about the political implications one way or the other here, they shouldn't necessarily assume that the courts are going to bail them out. They have to uh, work with their representatives to fight on those issues.